In this presentation, we will enter and adjust an entry related to notes payable and the related interest. We're going to enter our journal entry on the general journal in the left. We're going to post that to our worksheet. Our worksheet is in order with a trial balance, assets, liabilities, equity, income, and expenses. Assets green, liabilities orange, equity light blue, revenue, and expenses dark blue. We know that we are in balance because the debits minus the credits equal zero. We're currently at 700,000 revenue, which is sales uh, or revenue minus expenses at this time. Now this could be a normal planned adjusting entry, or it could be something that uh, we have to fix, kind of like an error or a problem. In other words, we might set up the system in this way to plan for this adjusting entry to happen at the end of the time period and, and adjusting entry being something done at the end of the month or a year end of the time period in order to be on a more perfect accrual system. So to see this, what we're doing is looking at this uh, notes payable account here. And we can see that the notes payable was on the books for 100,000 and then it was adjusted down to 90,000 for uh, 60. That's what's happened so far. What we have here is the terms of the note and the amortization table. Now note that a lot of times a bookkeeper may only have this information because that's all that's given in the note. In other words, not have an amortization table. And they may, so if that's the case, we may say from an outside perspective at the end of the month or year, let's just set it up as easy as possible for the people putting in the data to write the check at the end of the month every time we have to pay off this loan, the loan being for 100,000, the payments being for 3,180. The problem is they don't know if they don't have an amortization table, how much to break out between interest and principal. And even if they did know that, it would complicate the system. What we want, we want them to be able to just do data input possibly and just be able to enter this check and write the check whenever it's due. And that's all they have to worry about. So, and if they have to worry about breaking it out between interest and principal, then that's gonna change every check. We can't just set the system up to say, just do the same thing each time because the interest and principal portions will change. So it, we could set up the system and say, hey, when you write the check, just write the check and take it out of cash. And then the other side will just go to the note payable. And that's it, as if it was all principal. So if we tell them to do that, and then we'll just say, well, we're gonna fix it at the end of the time period. So if we tell them to do that, we can see this notes payable here. If we looked at the GL or the activity is being made up of these three payments. So three payments have happened. The note was on the books for the original 100,000. And then these three payments happened. Instead of breaking out the principal portion to the note payable, and then the related interest for those three months, everything was just put into the notes payable because that's just the easiest thing to do. And now we're gonna go to it at the end of the month and fix it. Now that could also happen by accident. You might have a note payable on the books and maybe we didn't know how to break it out. We didn't have an amortization table. So we accidentally just put it all to the notes payable. Either way, at this point in time, we're going to have to say, okay, here's the amortization table. We need to tie this out to the amortization table and break out the interest portion. At the end of the day, this number should be what it should be at this point in the loan, meaning three payments have happened. Therefore, we should be at 92,655 at this point. And the difference should be interest, which should add up for three months, the 750 for the first payment, 732 and then 713. So that interest should be at uh, 2,195. So to adjust that then, we, we have this amount here that really needs to be to the 2,000, to the 92,655. In other words, it needs to go up. So this is a credit balance. We need to increase it. So we'll do the same thing to it, a credit. So we'll just credit this account, copy this. And I'm gonna put that on the bottom in B13, right click and paste one, two, three. And then again, you, you could think of it a, a few different ways. It's a, we could think of it as a subtraction problem. So I'm gonna put negative to flip the sign of, we need it to be this 92, 92, 655. I'm putting negative and then brackets to flip the sign and then do the math within the brackets. And then minus the 90,460, that's what we have on the books. Close up the brackets. So all I did was take the 92,655 minus the 90,460 and then flip the sign to make it a negative for a credit for our worksheet. And we can also think of that, by the way, by just saying 
uh, it should be the interest that we're breaking out, meaning this 750 plus the 732 plus the 713, 2001.95. Uh, okay, and that's gonna be the debit as well. So I'm gonna be up here to our little plug formula of negative of this number. And there we have that. I'm gonna move to the right just a little. Okay, and so now that's gonna go to the interest expense. So we'll say interest expense, right click and copy. We'll put that on top in uh, B12, right click and paste one, two, three. I'm gonna indent this, it should be done for you already. It's just formatting, home tab, alignment, increase and denting. So let's post this and see if it does what we want it to do. What do we want it to do? We want it to record that interest expense according to the amortization table and bring this down to where it should be after three payments, 92,655. So interest expense is here. Here it is on our worksheet. So we are in H10, we'll say equals, point to that 2,195, bringing this up and brings net income down. So we're reporting the interest portion of the payments over and above the paying back of the principal. And then there's something in here already. So we're just gonna double click on it go to the end of it, plus, and then we'll uh, point to the note payable and enter. And that'll bring the note payable up by uh, 92,655. And that will match what we have on our amortization table. Why did we have to bring the note up? Remember what happened here is we, we took all these interest payments and put it to the note, bringing the note down as if we're paying off all principal. But part of that payment, of course, is due to the rent, like kind of us borrowing the money, like renting and using the money. And it's going to be an expense down here. So we put this down too much and we had to bring it back to where it should be. This is where the current balance is. The difference of 2,195 is kind of like the rent on the money. That's just an expense for the time period used.